Good morning, and welcome to the worship service at Gross Point United Methodist Church on this warm summer Sunday morning. We're so glad you've joined us today, whether you're a longtime member of our church or a new visitor. And we're happy to see all of you in person here today in our sanctuary. We also want to welcome everyone watching the service online this morning via our live stream or watching the recording of the service. If you're here with us in person, please make sure to sign the attendance pads in your pew and pass them down. We'd also love everyone to join us for coffee hour after the service in the Great Hall, which you can get to by turning right as soon as you leave the sanctuary. If you're watching us virtually, we'd love to know that you're here with us, so please leave us a comment on YouTube. I'd like to remind everyone here in the sanctuary to please silence your cell phones at this time. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of God. Our call to worship is Psalm 42 verses 1 through 6, which can be found on page 777 of the United Methodist Hymnal. This is a responsive reading, and I'll be reading both parts so the folks watching from home can follow along. Again, page 777. <clears throat> As a deer longs for flowing streams, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God and the, li the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng and led them in the procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Open my God, whom I again shall praise, and help my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mazar. All your ways.
Thank you, Craig, for greeting us and welcoming us into worship this morning, and Doug for a beautiful organ voluntary to kind of center our hearts and minds as we gather this morning for worship. Now hear these words of greeting. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. But here and now we can see God's love shining through our neighbors as we gather for worship this morning. So I invite you to take a moment just to look around and see the shining faces around you, those who are gathered for worship. And for those online, I encourage you to look around your room or think about those who cause your face to shine as you think of them. Some good faces, right? I get a chance to see all of your great faces. But those in the front, they don't get a chance to see everyone. So I hope you get a chance to look around and see who is here as we gather for worship this morning. My name is Reverend David Erdley. I have the privilege of serving as senior pastor here at Gross Point United Methodist Church. And it is good. It is good to be here to worship God, to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And as United Methodists, we practice an open table. You need not be a member of this church or a United Methodist. It is Jesus himself who invites you to come and share at his table. So we all have that same privilege and the same gift of receiving the Lord's Supper. I invite us now to join together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3 and verses 8 through 16. These verses convey the meaning of faith 
and illustrate that meaning through Abraham's example of having great faith in things that were yet to come, even if he could not experience all of them in his lifetime. Listen to the word of God. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, with Sarah's involvement, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return, but as it is, they desire a better homeland, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of God for the people of God. I'd like to invite all the children to come up, please. Good morning, good morning. Calamity's birthday party today. Good morning. Hi, Lula. Vacation girl over there. Hi, Domino. You want to sit with me or something? Look who I brought today. Do you love that little honey or what? Do you guys remember what his name is? What's his name? Do you guys remember? He is a dragon, Domino. His name is Sparky. He was our uh, character at VBS last year, remember, Sparky? Hold on, I'm going to tell you about the map in a second. Do you guys ever read stories about dragons? Yeah. Or have you ever seen them on a movie? Dragons are, they're make-believe, right? Oh, is that a dragon duck? Oh, my gosh. Jacqueline, it was the Lord speaking to you this morning, and you brought your dragon duck to church? What? That's amazing. All right, so dragons are make-believe, right? But they're usually guarding something, like a castle or a treasure. Ah. And what do they do to guard their treasure? How do they keep people away, you guys? Ah, they blow fire, they blow smoke or something. You can hug Sparky. Do you guys ever read stories about pirates? Calamity, do you ever read stories about pirates? Yeah. Yeah. Pirates are on a ship, right? And they go around and they're catching... While well, they're trying to like take treasure and stuff from other ships, they're not really the friendliest guys and gals out there. They're stealing stuff from ships, but it's their treasure, right? And they want to save it. So well, where does a pirate put their treasure, you guys? Treasure chest. Well, yeah, they put it in a treasure chest, and then they leave it somewhere. And how do they know where to find it? X. Yeah, they have a treasure map, and then they label it. X marks the spot. Turn it around so Marnie can see it. See that red X on there? Turn this way so your buddy Lawson can see. Yeah, so they say, okay, you guys, this is where we hid our treasure, so we're going to go back on the sea and we'll find it later. Have you guys ever gone on a treasure hunt? Yes. You have? Henry's been on a treasure hunt. Maybe you've done one at home, in the house or outside. Maybe somebody drew you a map like this. When I was a kid, my aunts and uncles did that up north one time, and we had a lot of fun. Maybe if somebody writes clues on a slip of paper, that could be a treasure hunt, too. Hold on, love. My hand's still inside of it. So a lot of time and effort goes into finding treasure, don't you guys think? Do you guys know what treasure is? 
it's, it's really, it's something that we value, something that you find really special. Like maybe it's a pretty ring. Oh, Marnie thinks dragons are real. Maybe Domino is a treasure to me. You guys are my little treasures. Treasures can be people. Yeah, yeah all of you guys are my treasures in life. Declan, your treasure could be your little ducky. Maybe that's your prize possession, Declan. You know what is also a treasure, you guys? Love. Love is also a treasure. God is a treasure totally, Calamity. Yeah. But you know what about love being a treasure, you guys? We don't have to hunt for it because it's inside all of us. And we, it's not hiding anywhere. You just have to make Right, exactly. Love is in our heart all the time. So we don't need dragons or maps to guard it, you guys. Because we want to share it with everybody else. We want to share that love with everybody else. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Oh, that would be a fun treasure hunt. Oh, to have candy at the end. I love that idea. So love is a treasure, and we all have it, Domino, and we can all give it and receive it. Isn't that special? Will you guys say a quick prayer with me? Will you guys say a quick prayer with me? All right, dear God, help us to remember to keep love in our heart. It's our greatest treasure. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Remember, walking feet to Miss Marilee. Don't run up those stairs without her. And she's going to take you guys on a little scavenger hunt today. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, children, for our chancel chat. And I think the finance committee would like to see that treasure map. <laughs> <laughs> The focus is really this morning about our treasure, about our hearts, and what, what is that center for us, what inspires us, what encourages us to live in love like Jesus. Who are the people that remind us of the power of following Jesus? Who are his grace? And so we come to this time of our worship service where we remind that it is giving is one of the ways that we share and live out the love of Jesus Christ. One of the ways in which our heart is encouraged. One of the ways in which we make a difference in the world around us. So your giving, as you know, feeds the hungry. Your giving provides for the blessing of sharing Jesus with our children through Sunday school and through an amazing week of Vacation Bible School. Your giving is a reflection of all that God has given to you. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us pray. We thank you for the many gifts of our lives and of our world. May these gifts that we return to you shine like a beacon of love and compassion to a world in need. And bless us to be a people of faith and faithful giving, that we are always ready to see and to serve where needed. All Jesus' people said, Amen. Amen. Our second scripture reading today comes from Luke, chapter 12, verses 32 through 40. This well-known passage finds Jesus telling his followers to focus their hearts and actions on heavenly things and always be prepared for the future kingdom that is coming. Hear the word of God. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night, 
or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Craig. Thank you for that reading of Scripture. Will you pray with me? Holy Spirit, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock, our Redeemer, and the one who has presented us the kingdom. Amen. I want to go ahead and just read those scriptures, verses 32 through 34, um, just one more time. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus is speaking some powerful words here in the beginning of the passage that we heard this morning. Do not be afraid, calling us little flock. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In the Greek, the tense is now. This is something that God has already done. We didn't deserve it. We didn't work towards it. We didn't earn it. It is presented to us as God's choice, God's decision, or as one commentator says, God's delightful decision. The kingdom is already here. Throughout this week, I had the privilege during Vacation Bible School of giving the prayer before we had our snack. And I love that time because you're always that, just like at a wedding reception when you do the prayer before the food, people just want you to finish, right? The thought is, I hope it's not a long prayer, right? We're hungry. And, the, and I have to say, the children throughout the week were amazing. Throughout the week with the weather and some of the hot weather too, their spirit was inspiring. Their joy, their interest, their participation was really cool to experience. And so this was the prayer that I had a chance to, to say to them, and they repeated And We learned this prayer throughout the week because this was our, what part of the theme of this week's Food Truck Party VBS. God is great. God is good. Let us, thank our, let us thank God for our food. That's the part that I, that's the part of the prayer that I know best. That's what we said the most at meals. And then there's these other two parts. By God's hands, we all are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. And then we close with amen. And I love that prayer, and I loved that time because on Monday, I found out what the pudding was going to be used for as well. I enjoyed discovering that I'm not the only adult that enjoys gummy worms, especially the really fresh ones as well, too. And some of the amazing snacks that were shared, the wonderful story time that was shared, too, the fun time with the games and the crafts and the science, and then the music, watching Emily doing this so well, because I am not coordinated at all, as my wife knows very well, doing all the correct hand motions to the video as the kids were singing the songs. I'm always trying to figure out, am I mirroring what's on screen? So their left hand, my right hand. And by that point, I've missed what they were doing, too. So I'm not really sure what the motions were. But to watch the joy of the children, of the youth that helped, of the adults, be a part of that week. And the gift of that week for our children that participated. And one of the most awesome ways, I think, as a church, we remember what it is to be the church. We rediscover something about following Jesus that maybe we don't always think about. Maybe it's not always first in our heads and our hearts of the joy that we have and that we can share with one another. And that we can learn together as children, as youth, as adults. It's not something that we have graduated to as adults. We're still learning as they're learning. And it was really neat to experience Vacation Bible School with those children who, like me, were experiencing it for the first time here. I had a great conversation with, with young, one young woman who was here, a young lady who was here for the first time, and I said, I'm so glad you're here. I said, thank you for coming. I'm so glad you're here. And she said, well, thank you for inviting me. I'm really glad to be here. And I thought that was such an awesome comment from her to hear that, that she felt honored to be invited. It mattered to be invited and how much she enjoyed being there. And just, it was fun watching her throughout the week and the other children just enjoy. And one of the gifts of Vacation Bible School that we offer is indeed seed planting. 
is seed planting around where our treasures are as people and as a church, what we value. It gives, especially families that don't have a connection to this church, a, an entree into who we are striving to be, who we're hoping to be, a welcoming community, an inviting community, a community that has space for each and every one who comes, a place that will provide daily bread, a teaching and a learning that we can apply to our daily lives, an opportunity to welcome not just one strata of humanity, but all ages, all experiences, all journeys. Talked to several of the parents on Friday during the party and several moms that, that are, I don't believe are, are tending here, but this is their church for their children, this experience. They're telling other families about their experience at Vacation Bible School and how powerful it was to hear that witness too, that it's a way of making this space, this community, making our church a home. And one of the powers when we treasure that, when we treasure being inviting, when we treasure being welcoming, is that it engages our actions and reactions watching our chef greet one another, watching Mary Lee from behind the, the, the set trying to speak and maneuver DJ Cupcake was really impressive, the wonderful puppet for this year's Vacation Bible School. And your gifts of prayer, your gifts of Oreo cookies and pretzels and all the wonderful snacks that you provided helps create a welcoming space, a space where the kingdom of God not is going to be present, but where the kingdom of God is present, where the kingdom of God already is. And that's powerful. Yeah, one of the fun things I had to do was to stand and watch Paul Blunden greet the families as they came in each morning and check in with the children and immediately create a welcoming space of families who felt safe with their children here on our campus during Vacation Bible School. That's such a wonderful gift that in an, in an honor of trust that we are given by families in our church and by families in the community that give us this opportunity to have their children for 12 to 15 hours during the summer during Vacation Bible School. That's a gift. It's a privilege that we have. And so when we can honor them by giving their children a glimpse of of God's love, of God's grace, of God's mercy, of the joy of following Jesus, of what it means to be generous in giving, what it means to smile and laugh and say, God is good, God is great, that we thank God for our food, a way to plant that seed, that the things that we have are a gift from God, our daily food, but our talents as well and our abilities an opportunity to begin investing in them about a framework, about a, about a, a way of living that is guided by our thoughts of who we are in relation to God, that we are God's little flock, that we are the ones to whom God... And it's a gift that we know that changes and transforms lives. In the midst of those 50 children over this past week are probably some of the future clergy of this church and of our conference, future youth leaders, Sunday school teachers, trustee chairs, ushers, choir members, participants in a mission work trip. That's the power of that week, is the potential and the possibility that is there. And the opportunity that we have to share God's word, but to live it to let our children know that the words inspire us to live, that we're just not saying one thing and living completely different lives, which is what they see too much around them, but to see a group of people, a church, committed to living and loving like Jesus, not just saying Jesus' name, but also living our lives like Jesus would live. That's profound. God uses opportunities such as this past week for good. Because not only are our children and our volunteers inspired, but your own pastors inspired after a week of vacation Bible school. Jesus said, where your treasure is, your heart will be where your treasure is. For where, 
where your treasure is, he says, there your heart will be also. Because Jesus knew us better than sometimes we know ourselves. Sometimes we like to think that, okay, our heart's going to place, place, place us in the spot where our treasure is. But Jesus knows, knows our hearts better and knows that, no, the things that we are passionate about, sometimes it's stuff, and we know that. We live in a culture, in a culture, in a, in a nation where stuff is, is a focus, stuff is a priority. But we know because of our, our relationship with Jesus Christ that stuff is not the whole story. It's a part of the story, but it's not the whole story. But to treasure things that Jesus treasures, compassion, being generous to those in need, that if we treasure that, then that's where our heart is going to be. Our heart's going to be there. A heart for people. A heart for caring. A heart for compassion. He's inviting us in the rest of that passage to be ready. And he wants us to be ready to be a sign that the kingdom is present. It's not be ready for heaven, as it were. It's be ready for revealing heaven around you. To be a sign where there may be no other signs around you of God's grace, of God's mercy, of God's justice, of God's peace, of God's forgiveness. Jesus says be ready to be that sign. Recognize who you are. You already have the kingdom. God's already given that to us. Let's live it out. Let's share it. Let's offer it. It's powerful. It's life-changing. And it impacts each and every part of our daily lives. And it's fun, right? It's hard. I know that too. But it's also fun it's fun to offer hope. It's fun to help somebody else's life be better. Your commitment to the, and our commitment to the Emanuel Food Pantry is part of that. Commitment to blessings in a backpack, offering and purchasing those school supplies is a sign of where our generosity can be fun. That investing in our community around us, it's part of living and loving like Jesus, is part of being God's people. It's one of the ways that we grow in our faith as well. And it matters. It matters to God, and it matters to those who are recipients of those blessings. Families who are hungry being fed, children having the school supplies they need to start the year successfully. It matters. So Jesus tells us again, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So we will not be afraid. We will receive what God has given, but we will share it as well. Because God is great. God is good. And we thank God for our food. By God's hand, we all are fed, and that means not just this all, but all, 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 all of all. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. But Lord, also help us as we are able to offer others the daily bread that you have provided as well. This morning, we'll be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion, a reminder of the outpouring of God's grace and mercy upon us. Jesus' willing choice to be crucified, to be our sacrifice, but also his willing choice on that third day as we celebrate on Easter, his resurrection, that he is alive and at work among us, in us, and around us even now, that he invites us to this holy meal to be renewed, to experience once again God's grace and God's mercy, to find ourselves wholly human, W-H-O-L-L-Y and H-O-L-Y, that in Jesus Christ we may be fully ourselves, fully the men and women that God has created us to be. I'm going to invite us to use page 9 in our United Methodist hymnal, and we will share those words in this sacrament.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathe into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Jesus healed the sick, fed the hungry and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Indeed, these are the gifts that have been offered. We remember Jesus' body broken in the sharing of bread. And through the cup, remember his sacrifice. His love poured out upon the cross for us and for the world that we would be new, that we would receive salvation and new life through him. I appreciate Craig helping with communion this morning, and I want to invite up my wife Sarah and Marcia Wright. If you would come up and join us as we receive communion this morning. And selfishly, I'm also grateful because both Marcia and Sarah will be joining our church soon, too. So, But we'll offer communion to our stewards, and then we will offer communion to the congregation. We're going to invite you to come forward to receive communion. We'll be receiving it through intinction. We invite you to take a piece of the bread and then dip it into the cup. And if those that are unable to come forward, we will come and bring communion to you as well. Oh, thank you. We also have the, the prepackaged um, bread and cup too, if you would prefer that this morning as well.
I invite you to hear this prayer after communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This time I'd like to invite anyone who has ministry opportunities to come forward. I know I have one, but I, I will let Emily start. Good morning, church. Just to add to what um, David was talking about this morning, we had a really awesome week at VBS. We hosted 54 kids and we had 28 volunteers here throughout the week. We had daily visits from Chef Dave DeWitt and DJ Cupcake, played by Marilee Day. We learned a prayer at snack time, led by Pastor David. We did crafts, learned Bible stories, did science experiments, had recreation time, danced and sang a lot. And we ended Friday with a party with a giant slide, bounce houses, lunch, and a visit from the Kona Ice Truck. Our Vacation Bible School is free to those in our church and in our community. We do accept um, a free will offering during the week, and we were able to raise $1,000 this year. Marilee and I could not be successful in our programming without you guys, so we wanted to publicly thank all of you. Whether you were one of the 28 here with us in person, or you donated food or water or juice, maybe you made a snack ahead of time, or you helped us set up last week and many more things we appreciate you guys so much and speaking of help and cute kids that i see right now we got a lot um, cleaned up friday after our party but there is still more to be done so just one more thing we need from you if you're able to help us take down that tent 
outside. I think the chairs and the tables are now maybe inside, but we just need help bringing down that tent if anybody is able, if you'll meet us on the lawn after church. Thanks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you again, Emily. My name is Ashley Deeb with Outreach. Um, prior to the school year starting in September, Outreach is collecting uh, backpacks and school supplies. If you've seen the growing pile um, when you came in, it's a beautiful thing to see this morning. Um, there are printed lists out there in terms of items that are needed. Also online, uh, if you follow the link, uh, there's also the lists there that are available. Uh, we're collecting through August 21st um, through, uh, for the Methodist Children's Home, um, who supports a number of children um, through their foster program. Um, so a um, few questions that we've had just in terms of um, backpack supplies, Filling an entire backpack is not necessary. Even a box of crayons is appreciated and helpful. Um, as of last year, the Gross Point United Methodist Church was the sole provider for backpacks and supplies for the Methodist Children's Home. Um, and we hit our goal last year, and we'd love to do it again, um, thanks to this very generous congregation. So again, we're collecting through the 21st. It can be dropped off right there in the back. Um, if anyone needs a pickup at their house, um, just let us know, and a member of the Outreach Committee is happy to do that as well. Thank you. For those wonderful ministry opportunities as well, and for your recognition of Emily and her leadership of Vacation Bible School, that was really cool to experience. I want to thank you again for being part of our worship service this week, both in person and online as well. And just following the service, if you are a first-time guest, we are so thrilled that you made GPUMC your church home. I'd love to talk with you or greet you. I'll be in a narthex kind of on the way to our coffee hour space, and for those that will be helping us tear down the tent as well, we really appreciate that extra help. But now let me offer this word of benediction. May you go and experience the peace of Christ this week. May you experience the love of Christ. May those around you experience the peace of Christ in you. May those around you experience the love in Christ in you. Go and be the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.